Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today we're in part number two of Massive Darkness, the unboxing. So if you haven't seen the first part of this video, uh, definitely go check that out first because we already went through the core box in the back there. Uh, now we're gonna jump into the Lightbringer pack which came with the Kickstarter. And again, it's a bunch of stretch goals and things that may or may not be in retail. So do your homework if you're interested in the game to see what is and isn't coming. Uh, again, because I can't speak off memory as to which ones are part of retail and which ones aren't. Uh, but some of this stuff in the back here that you can't see off camera will be going to retail so you can pick that up. Um, but some of this stuff here I believe is, ex is Kickstarter exclusive. So take it with a grain of salt, but this is the kind of stuff to expect if you're waiting for it in the mail. So I believe as a Kickstarter exclusive, we get a quest of crystal and lava. This is something that's uh, given to us. Again, so in the base game, there's quests that you obviously go through, very similar to Zombicide. Uh, so this is gonna allow us to uh, implement the uh, two different types of tiles that are given to us during the Kickstarter, the, the crystal zones and the lava zones, which will just change up the way the game is played because they're gonna give special rules essentially to each of the different tiles. So that's pretty cool. Again, you're also gonna get some quests that are very, very specifically made for use with these tiles. So it's kind of like getting a, a mini expansion within the game uh, for being a backer and things like that. And again, what may end up happening in the future is this may end up being included with the tile pack, essentially. I can't speak to that 100%, so I don't wanna make promises that are not reality. So do your homework and double check on those things. Um, so again, inside of this box, we got two cardboard boxes here. So let's go for, I don't even know which one to go for first. We'll go for this one. This one looks like the miniature box. And then I got lucky here. So there's gonna be all the Kickstarter exclusive miniatures that are in the game. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch here. So let's try to show you them all at once and I can pull a few out and show you as well. So you got some, uh, some very interesting characters here. So looks like some werewolves. Uh, again, some guys with some tusks. Uh, that's like an iron giant essentially. Uh, I can't remember what the names of each of them are, but I'll just let you kind of like take a look at them. Their detail is incredible. Uh, again, painting wise, this would be a dream. I would enjoy sitting there and just painting these guys up. That guy's got a nice humongous club. Great miniatures though all the way around. Two headed kind of troll situation going there. I don't even know what you'd call that. It's quite a mess, uh, but he's intimidating that's for sure. The funniest stretch goal of all of them was this unicorn, which was absolutely ridiculous. Um, this was thrown in as like a thank you at the end of the campaign. Uh, so again, and it's not a nice unicorn. I believe it, it can do some serious pain uh, to you. Again, I think some of these guys are actual heroes to be added to the game, although the guy in the top left does not look like much of a hero. So uh, there could be some villains mixed in. Some more enemies. So this is kind of like getting uh, more of what was in the core game. So in case you run into miniatures, there's some extras to kind of beef up the core game. And uh, again, very, the molds are the same and stuff like that. I don't think that they went with any different molds on that one. So that's just kind of a pack of extra miniatures, which is really cool and awesome. Next up, we got, uh, an, oh, looks like another pack of miniatures. I thought that was it. Uh, so this one's also miniatures, although this one looks like it's gonna be absolutely massive. And it wouldn't be called Massive Darkness without some humongous miniatures. So here's the big guys. These would be like, if you're familiar with Black Plague, you're talking about the guys that are overwhelmingly large. Uh, I believe there was, uh, this guy actually was featured at a recent CMON Expo, painted up, this guy holding the stone. It looked quite incredible. There's some trolls. Um, very, very cool miniatures. Some creepish otherworld type things, Cthulhu-based stuff. This one looks like some type of ghost. Um, I believe it's a, called the Thing. It might be called the Thing. I can't remember. Uh, kind of looks like something from Stranger Things. Um, Hellsbane, carrying his gigantic axe there and stuff. I need to take a couple of these out so you guys can see them out, out from behind the plastic because some of these are just crazy. Uh, there's, there's an idea of how big this guy is. And I can tell you right now, he is top heavy. Like that rock is uh, solid. I think the majority of the weight is in this rock. Uh, so he's uh, he's a big guy. That's gonna be, that would be an incredible painting experience. Uh, great miniature to go to town with. Uh, this one was really cool. I like this one. It's kind of like the nightmare of the thing. He's just an ugly looking dude. And you don't want to run into something like that inside of a dungeon. Uh, this one here is like a bear, like kind of a, like a, he looks really cool. It's like a shaman uh, or shaman bear. I don't know. He's very, very cool though. And you can see detail on his fur is incredibly, incredibly detailed there. You can do some, again, for all the people that are painters, this is uh, pretty cool stuff. Get yourself like a goblin, kind of goblin troll goblin it looks like. And he's got like a massive stone hammer. This thing is just weird. I don't know, I think this is called the Overseer, I think is what they call it. I forget what the name was during the Kickstarter, but this thing is just strange looking. 
I don't think you want to see anything with that many eyes looking at you. Uh, but again, very cool. Uh, they, uh, again, this game is going to be very, very interesting when I get it to the table. And again, you get to, we've got some special uh, tiles. So these are the tiles I was talking about. These, I think, and I can't make promises on this stuff, guys. I think these are coming to retail, but I could be totally wrong, so double check that. But these are the lava and crystal tiles. So again, giving you a little variation of that light and dark, but going in and probably the game mechanics within the crystal areas would be different. And of course the lava tiles likely would hurt you if you stay out there too long. So it just it just plays a little differently, um, which is cool because anything to change up actual gameplay is a huge plus to any game in my opinion. Uh, especially when it comes to a dungeon crawler. Uh, so just off camera here, so just you're aware, I'm just doing a little cut of the plastic, doing my best not to slice my finger open at the same time. So we're just tearing off the plastic here because I want to show you guys the tiles uh, for the for this one here. So here we go. Here is a lava tile. This is the one you guys just saw that was on the very top of the pile. Uh, underneath, oh, it kind of looks like they're double sided based on you know, one for each color kind of thing. So that's cool. So one crystal, one lava, I guess, is how they're doing it. Um, so that's really good. I don't know how many tiles are here in total. It looks like there might be six, if I'm guessing correctly. There's some really cool, cool looking art, crystal cavern kind of thing. That's really interesting. I like that. That's gonna, it's gonna really make the dungeon kind of come alive a little bit with some color instead of it just being. Uh, light and dark, so that's really I really appreciate that as a and I think that was something that many people were voicing during the Kickstarter saying like hey There really needs to be some variation in the tiles and some of like this I think this is their way of appeasing the people that wanted uh, Something more than just light and dark. So this is very cool And again gives lots of variation and the cool thing with uh, CMOD is you can buy these tile packs outside of the game If you want to make your dungeons outrageously massive so if you want to play this game on a huge scale and invite a whole bunch of friends over and set up a ton of these things all over the place. Uh, you can buy tile packs separately when they eventually release to retail. Uh, again, I don't know if these ones will. We'll see. Um, again, inside of the Kickstarter exclusive thing, you typically get a bag. This is a really nice looking bag. You see the stitching is very, it might not do it justice, but under the light, it looks like uh, it's got a shimmery gold look to it. It's really shiny. So it's really hard to show that shimmer. So I don't know if you guys are able to catch that in the camera or not. But this is not just stitched like normal. It's stitched with like a glitter like it literally looks like glitter to me i think you can see it there a little bit shimmering so it really pops from a distance it looks uh, really cool i like that of course you get your cards i don't need to go through these because these are just cards that are specific like we did in the base or in part one that are for each of the monsters as well as heroes so there's cards for each one that's pretty straightforward looks like we also got thrown in a little tiny pack of like cool kind of unique artifact cards there might be some other stuff in here, but it looks like it's just a bunch of artifact cards. Now there was a big, big announcement from uh, Simon recently that there was some weird uh, colored, I think, I don't know if it was colored, um, sorry, discoloration or if it was misprints. I believe it was misprints in terms of where you could see, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was something like, uh, they, they printed black over top of something or they printed the color of the dice over something on these cards and not all of them, just some of them. And it made it really hard to see. And I think it had something to do with the numbers down here or something like that. And it made it difficult to see. So I don't know if mine was impacted or not, but they've already made an announcement saying that they're going to send out replacements for everybody to rectify that situation. So I think that was just kind of an oversight. Um, again, we get more of these pads. So this one's actually out of the box. I can show you guys this one. So you can see in the last part, I said, I didn't bother opening it up, but this one's one pad. It's Bone Crusher. I think this is the exclusive one. So the whole thing's Bone Crusher. So you get a whole bunch of them, right? So you don't need to laminate this stuff, guys. Uh, just because I'm saying that. I just particularly like the idea of laminating because you end up keeping a game in tip-top shape. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, games are meant to be played. So uh, you don't have to do what I'm saying. <laughs> you can do exactly what you feel. Um, so that's pretty much it for the Lightbringer pack. So uh, without putting it all away, because that'll just waste some time, I'm going to just shuffle this over to the side and we're going to grab something else and cut right into it and see what's inside. So let's take a look at the chests and pillars expansion or little add-on. So 15 normal treasure chests, four special treasure chests, and six pillars. That's cool. I didn't know there was going to be any difference between the normal and special chests. I thought they were going to be all the same. So that's a nice surprise. Um, I'm just going to tear that off real quick. Take a look. What do we got here? Now this is the kind of packaging that I'll likely not keep. I'll probably just somehow merge this into the base box. I don't have to deal with all the 
packages, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got some pillars again and stuff like this. I'm not too sure what the pillars do with the gameplay again, but it's nice to have a 3D terrain. It's never a bad thing. And it's also nice to have uh, chests that are very specific to the game. So you can see these are gonna be, from what I'm assuming here, these guys right here are all your typical normal chests and your special chests on the outside. So nothing too, too like remarkably earth shatteringly shocking there. Um, I've seen, I've seen bigger and probably better chests and, and pillars in other games, uh, but at the end of the day, these were free. They were part of the, uh, this is kind of like what was considered an extra as part of the Kickstarter, so there's no complaining for me there. Um, I can't really get the tape off easily, otherwise I would open this up and show you guys. Uh, and I also don't want to start with it too long. So let's see if I can get this to come off. Just doing this off camera so that I don't end up knocking the camera. There we go, one side open. Okay, let me show you what a pillar looks like, for example. So there's one pillar right there. So it's about the size of my hand or so. It's it's not like, it's not massive or anything. Uh, but it's it's a good size, like it's decent. Uh, it's probably three and a half inches or so or something like that. Maybe three, no, it's probably not three and a half. It's probably like three, maybe two and a half. <laughs> I've been overshot that a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's not bad. Again, it's a miniatures game, so it's always nice to have 3D terrain, like I said. So that's that. Done deal. All right, now there's some leftover stuff here. Uh, this is the stuff that's left over. We got uh, Sorcerers versus Lord Tux, Tusk, sorry. We have Troglogites. I seriously can't even pronounce that. I'm going to butcher it. This is the pack for the Black Flag that is exclusive to Kickstarter. I really don't think this is coming to retail. So if you didn't get that or get that from somebody who was already in on Kickstarter, you probably won't see it. And this is Noble Warriors and the Cockatrice. Tricks, sorry. So we can take a look at any of these. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this blue one open first. The Noble Warriors one. Let's take a look and see what's inside of this one. So just tear open the packaging real quick. These should be pretty straightforward. They shouldn't take too much time to go through because they're really just gonna enhance the amount of heroes and or enemies in the game. So these are, and there's more. The crazy thing is my, what I have here guys is not the full thing. Some people went ape and got everything. Uh, I didn't do that, this is just the base. So again, you get another sheet here. This sheet actually took a beating a little bit. You can see it's kind of coming off its pad a bit. So this is called the Noble Warrior. Another, It gives you another class that you can be. The cool thing is you can mix these with any hero that you are. You also, of course, get some new cards. That's never a bad thing to add some cards into the game, including artifacts, it looks like. And you can see, this is a little bit empty. Uh, so this is a box I probably won't be keeping because uh, there's only four miniatures in this. I'll probably find a way to merge this into the other game. I think this is, this all, I'll leave my thoughts on this until the component overview. Let's just say that. Uh, but essentially, I, I'm not too fond of boxes that are overly large for unnecessary reasons. Um, that is definitely one of them right there. Uh, so, you know, if you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a box this size, which is about you know it's tiny, it's an expansion box. But if you're only gonna get four miniatures in it, I just don't see the purpose of having a box that big. If it seems like kind of a waste of resources, so. Um, but we'll see what's in this one. So Sorcerers and uh, versus Lord Tusk. So this could be pretty cool. Uh, so in this one, you get uh, the Sorcerer class. So cool, it, the thing that I really like about these is they keep, they keep adding more stuff to the base game, right? Again, so very much like Zombicide, you buy these expansions, they're gonna give you some stuff. But in this game, it's not just enemies, it's uh, classes for your heroes, which is cool for when everybody goes to pick some stuff. And again, new artifact card as well as some cards in, included. To, for each of the heroes and the enemy. This one's a little bit nicer, but again, still lots of air in that and no real need to keep it. I might keep the box just for the fun of it, put it, flatten it out, put it somewhere, I don't know. But I'm probably not gonna store these in here forever. That miniature is really cool. I'm not gonna pull them out, but you can see the detail on him. He's awesome. I actually, that was one of the miniatures that I really, really, really thought was really well done. I, I just love the way he's holding those swords. Uh, that hero there is really cool, kind of a caped assassin. He's really cool. I was thinking I would probably end up using him most likely to start, and I got two other guys in there as well, like a necromancer or something, and a warrior. So that's awesome, no complaints there. Again, like I'm not, uh, and don't don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about what I'm actually seeing inside the box, I just don't think the box size is warranted for what is inside. Now maybe this one will change my mind because it's actually a square, it's a little bigger. Maybe this one will be a little closer to being full, we'll see. Um, and I, don't, I really don't know what the price points are going to be on some of this stuff when it hits retail. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, there were some really cool ones though, like Element, the Elementals, I think was one expansion box that I saw and I didn't get, but it looked really cool. It was kind of like you had your Earth, uh, you know, Elements, Monster, your Fire, your your Water, and, and, and I, I can't remember what the other one was. But they were really nice looking miniatures. 
Uh, so again, this is the one I'm opening up right now and we'll see what's inside. Actually, this might have my favorite enemy miniature. Yes, it does. This was a miniature that I literally just couldn't hang. I, I love this miniature. I knew I was gonna like it the second I got it. So basically this one's actually two levels deep. So there's actually quite a bit in this one. Uh, so there's your cards. Again, I'm not gonna open it up. It's just really cards for each of the enemies. So these guys are like brutes and stuff. And uh, of course, a greater roaming monster is gonna be this big bad right here. Um, again, these are tapes, so I'm gonna do my best real quick to pop the tape off so you guys can see things a little closer up. And that was the worst job of opening up tape I've ever seen. Okay, so let's pop the top section off. It's gonna be a little stubborn. Do -do -do. Uh, that was definitely not a smooth opening, that's for sure. Okay, done. All right, so there's your first layer. And this is the miniature that I absolutely was all over. I thought this was the coolest miniature of all of them. I don't know why, I just do. And for some strange reason, when I looked at this thing, and I haven't played World of Warcraft in 10 years or eight years or whatever, but this reminded me of the very first time I ever played World of Warcraft. I just saw this miniature and I was like, this is awesome. I love this thing, and uh, I would actually, if I was going to paint any miniature in the entire collection, this would be it. The funny thing is, it's not even the most complex or the most original. It's just to me, it's cool. I've always liked, uh, I've always liked the uh, uh, th this this type of character. So I mean, if I could play him as a hero, it'd make my day. But I can't. He's going to be coming after me inside of this dungeon, which is nasty. So again, all, there's a whole new set of enemies in this one, which is really cool because that'll add more variation to the game, and that's never bad. Um, I'm hoping that I can pull these apart. Maybe I can't. I did. There we go, violently. Uh, so again, we got some brutes. So guys with really big uh, kind of double bladed axes and you got shields there. Uh, and then you got, I believe those are the agents. They are a little bit stronger looking, more uh, armor on them. There's quite a bit of different, uh, there's quite a bit of different poses there, which is really nice to see. Um, this box is a much more, now this is what, this is where I go back to talking about my boxes. Uh, see this thing? It's literally, it's it's almost three-fourths of the same size and had three miniatures in it and this has like almost 20. So this is where I went back and said why were those other boxes so big? Uh, I think that was over the top. I think that was a little silly on their part. They probably should have just kind of merged those together somehow. Uh, so again, very, very cool miniatures. All those blades look nice and straight, which I like. And I think what helps with those being straight is that they're a little thicker than normal. So that's a huge plus on their end because uh, obviously the thinner that plastic is, the more chance that uh, it's gonna likely be bent and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, those are. this is actually a great expansion. This is one of my favorite ones. I'm really glad I was able to get it as part, uh, basically get it for free as part of the Kickstarter without having to deal with anything. So that's awesome. So that's pretty much, I think that's it. I think that's the whole thing. So uh, again, the next thing coming in line after I get all this stuff organized is I'm gonna set it up and we're gonna go through the solo setup video, which is gonna come up next. So right after you're done watching this video, if you like what you saw in this one, obviously give me a likes up, a <laughs> likes up, wow. Give me a like down below and also feel free to share this to let other people know what this game is all about. And then really, really hoping you enjoy uh, as we get into the showcase portion of this for Massive Darkness where I set up the game for you with no rules explanation and then we do the playthrough. Uh, we'll do a solo overview in order to do a quick sum up of some of the rules and kind of how things play at a high level. And then the real specific stuff we'll see as we go through the playthrough, very similar to what I've done in the past, and even what I'm doing with Sword and Sorcery. So again, hope you guys are enjoying. Hope you're enjoying the channel in general. I really, I'm doing this for you guys. I really, really uh, appreciate all the support. You guys have been incredible. Uh, and everyone giving me feedback along the way and stuff like this and joining in on the playthroughs and uh, just joining in in general uh, and stuff like that and meeting all you guys and getting to know you guys better as the as time goes on has been incredible. So feel free to always fire comments down below in the videos and uh, get at me because I make an effort to talk back and comment back on every single one that gets posted. So if I ever have missed you, I apologize because I, I make a concerted effort to find you and uh, <laughs> and message you back. So uh, I will see you guys in the next episode, which will be the uh, solo setup. So give me a thumbs up if you like what you see and you want to see more. And I will see you in the next episode. Keep on rolling solo.